All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Andy Kang, uh, K-A-N-G. I'm the legal director at Asian Americans Advancing Justice Chicago. Uh, I'm part of the Just Democracy Illinois Steering Committee. Uh, we have today uh, a number of folks standing with us. Uh, uh, just want to walk you really quickly through the, some of the speakers lineup, and then uh, we'll get to our comments. Uh, first of all, we have with us Representative Fortner, uh, Senator Menard, uh, Representative Gable is, is on her way, uh, and then we will have uh, uh, Camille Williams from Chicago Votes, uh, and then uh, we'll be happy to take questions uh, with, uh, from folks. Uh, just Democracy Illinois Steering Committee, uh, I'd like to thank the members standing with us, uh, Illinois PERG, Common Cause Illinois, uh, Change Illinois, Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, Chicago Votes, as well as the Chicago Lawyers Committee. We'd also like to thank uh, Zach Konsky from the United Food and Commercial Workers, AFL-CIO, standing with us uh, today as well. Um, and then finally, I would like to reiterate my thanks to Senator Menar, Representative Fortner, and Representative Gable uh, for being with us here today. Um, Automatic voter registration uh, will ensure every eligible voter, Democrat, Republican, and Independent, has an opportunity to have their voice heard on Election Day. Uh, now, updating and modernizing our outdated voter registration system, it will also streamline the voter registration process uh, by strengthening security, saving time, and money. Now, um, we think it's important to, to mention that uh, Election Day registration uh, right now uh, with automatic voter registration, it'll help reduce the burden that election day registration has to carry. And so that we're, ho are, we're hopeful that on election day, this will lead to shorter lines and, and move the process along faster. And then finally, um, automatic voter registration, it's important to note, has widespread support. Seven states already have this, uh, including, and then as well as the District of Columbia. And we're talking states as far out as Alaska and West Virginia. So uh, this is something that uh, we, we believe we have bipartisan support last year. We look forward to having bipartisan support this year. Uh, and we'll be working with all the key agencies. Uh, we've, we've been in talks with the governor's office, the legislative leaders, and we hope to get this uh, passed and signed into law this year. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, pass this over to Senator Menard. Thanks, Andy. Good. Uh, I guess is it afternoon or is it morning? I don't know. I don't even know. I've been in committee all morning. Um, thanks, Andy, and thanks to all the advocates and Representative uh, Fortner and Gable for uh, coming together uh, on Senate Bill 1933 and also the the House version. Um, I'll pick up where Andy left off. When we started uh, this conversation in the legislature in the spring of 2015, there were two states that had just acted to uh, put in place automatic voter registration laws. Those were the states of Oregon and California. As Andy said, there are uh, seven states today, including uh, the District of Columbia. There's an eighth state where a law is pending, passed by the General Assembly, sent to the governor of Nevada, and that bill is currently sitting on his desk. So um, I give a little bit of history to, to just reiterate uh, the fact that all along the way, uh, we have shown time and again why this is a common sense uh, reform for state government that not only saves money, it increases voter participation, and it modernizes our election system in the state without question. Um, as, as we saw last year, this is, uh, it, it can be complicated and uh, it can be cumbersome in terms of negotiating a bill, uh, but I believe that the bill that has been introduced in the Senate today is a final version of what ought to receive wide bipartisan support and support uh, from Governor Rauner. There's a couple of key differences I would just mention those briefly. Uh, first is the effective date. Uh, the, the bill's implementation is immediate, uh, but uh, the effective date essentially is July 1st of 2018, which would give uh, the agencies of, uh, that are impacted and affected uh, by the uh, provisions of the bill plenty of time uh, to implement what the bill says they ought to implement. And then finally, uh, there's an upfront opt-out provision uh, which, of course, everyone knows uh, was highlighted in the governor's veto message uh, a few months ago. Uh, that simply states that um, every individual at a driver's facility 
that interacts with the driver's facility has the ability to opt out of this upfront. As you recall, the previous bill that the Senate and House passed that the governor vetoed and couldn't override uh, required that uh, opt out to be on the back end of the process. So this moves it up front, which I think addresses many of the concerns that were articulated during uh, the debate of that previous bill. So again, um, we're here to say that we think this is a, a final bill. There's probably a few changes that need to be made that are uh, technical in nature. That happens uh, all the time with bills of this magnitude. Uh, but I appreciate Representative Fortner being here and for the other members of the General Assembly that have stepped up to support this. And I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, State Representative Mike Fortner from the 49th District, and I'm happy to be here today with Senator Menard uh, working towards a bipartisan solution so that we can have automatic voter registration in Illinois. I serve on the Elections Committee in the House, and we've heard testimony about just the elections from last year and how there were a lot of long lines and some difficulties in part because of the way our registration system works, particularly for same-day registration, and a more efficient process, a process that is linked to databases that we can operate successfully is going to do a lot to help make that a smoother process, better for the voters in the polling place, better for the poll workers, better for the county clerks that have to oversee it. As the Senator said, there are versions in both the House and the Senate. I was pleased to introduce House Bill 626 earlier this year, um, it, designed to address all of the governor's concerns in his veto message from last year. Um, there are still some smaller differences. It's great to see that our bills are much closer together than they were a year ago at this time, and I look forward to hammering out some of the, the difficulties, the technical issues that the Senator referenced and uh, bring us to a bipartisan conclusion and get automatic voter registration forward. Thank you. Uh, we're still in morning time? Yes. <laughs> good morning. I had an 8 o'clock committee this morning. So I've been, uh, good morning. Um, I am uh, thrilled to be here today. Uh, voting rights is very near and dear to my heart. I've been working on uh, voter registration for, for many, many years, since the 1980s. Um, and to me, voting rights really is the fundamental to our democracy. It is the big equalizer. Rich or poor, everyone has one vote. I think last year I was thrilled that we came very close to, to, uh, to getting a bill for automatic voter registration. Um, and I'm hoping that this year, as my colleagues have said, we can again come to a bipartisan agreement and uh, move this bill again to the governor's desk and this time have him sign it. That is our goal for this year. Um, you know, Illinois has, has uh, I think, about 70, 74 percent registered voters, but um, I, we can do better. I, there's an example from Oregon in their new motor voter automatic registration registration system, um, the voters in November shattered the state's record for voting age citizens participating in an election. So overall, 70.4% uh, of the state's voting age population sent in ballots. The previous record set, set in 2008 was 66%. So we have never quite been that high. Um, and in its first year, the automatic voter registration helped register 270,000 uh, folks in Oregon, 22,500 per month. Now, we know that Illinois has a much bigger population than Oregon, and I think we could even do better. So to me, this, is, uh, this bill is going to give um, voting rights to so many more people who have just not been using their voting rights at this point, and I am thrilled to be able to Work on, be working on this bill and hoping that we come to a, a bipartisan um, bill in just a short period of time. So thank you all. Good afternoon. My name is Camille Williams, C-A-M-I-L-L-E. I'm an organizer with Chicago Votes, and I'm here in support of Senate Bill 1933. As an organizer in Chicago and an active member of the Inglewood neighborhood, I engage my community in every election. 
I know from my personal experience with automatic voter registration will extend democracy to the communities that need it most. Through the Chicago Votes Parade to the Pro program, I have helped high school students from South and West Side to vote. Far too often, students have registered at the poll. By registering at, to vote at the DMV and social service agency, these students have, would already be registered. This would shorten wait times, broaden access, and lessen confusion at the polls. Automatic vo voter registration would make young people's first time voting experience positive and encourage them to become long time voters. This is why I support. Senate Bill 1933, and you should too. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so now we're, we're happy to take questions if there are any, uh, and it could be directed to any of the speakers. So what are some of the technical differences that we're still talking about between the bills, the House version and the Senate version? Yep. Time to wrap. So Jordan, if you look at the governor's veto, um, he outlined many things. What 1933 addresses is the time frame for implementation as well as the upfront opt-out. And my understanding is the representative's bill in the House would address all of those things. Uh, but I would say both versions are substantially similar to the previous bill that was passed. Uh, so whatever remains, I'm confident we can, we can work it out between both parties and both chambers. Yeah, the, I think the senator got it mostly right there. The, a lot of it's on the implementation, making sure, obviously we want to pass a bill, we want the governor to sign a bill, but we also need to make sure we have a law that can be implemented both by the State Board of Elections and by the Secretary of State since the DMV is going to play a large role in automatic voter registration. So getting those details of how that implementation works in the law that we pass, I think that's where a lot of the technical differences will end up being. Um, well, one of the things that, again, came out in testimony that we heard was that uh, I think the answer depends on the election. For instance, in the primary last spring, uh, it was Republicans, by and large, particularly in downstate counties, who had difficulty with the same-day registration system. So presumably automatic voter registration would have helped the Republicans voting that election. There are other elections where it was driven more by the Democrats trying to turn out, and presumably it would help them in those circumstances. And you also mentioned uh, linking databases and just in the era of you know, cyber spying and all hacking, uh, what safeguards are there if, uh, you know, against that kind of thing, messing up an election day? Well, I, I think that's actually some of the concerns that I know I had raised last year with how the opt-out, making sure the opt-out was an upfront opt-out because that meant the data was going to have as few um, different places to be if that person wanted to keep their data secure and was not interested in participating. So um, all through this, making sure that the data is handled appropriately is going to be something that all the agencies will have to be aware of. No, the, there's, there are other provisions whereby um, the county clerks or whoever the election authority is um, is going to be making uh, checks of the database. In fact, already there's uh, inter-county connections, and we are getting involved with interstate data communication to make sure that if there are records that show up in other states that are participating, that uh, using a multi-point system to make sure that it's not just someone's same name, but enough characteristics that we can really identify them, that that will allow uh, the local election authorities to keep the voter rolls up to date when someone moves, for instance. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously many of the organizations up here serve the immigrant community, so the last thing we want to see are accidents where uh, folks may face very dire immigration consequences from uh, registering to vote when they're not eligible. Uh, 
this bill, Senate Bill 1933, uh, the only individuals that would be uh, in the automatic voter registration process would be individuals that their information has been uh, verified that they are in fact eligible. And that's using uh, a criteria that will be set by the State Board of Elections. So uh, we've been in very close contact and con had a m series of conversations with the Illinois State Board of Elections as well as the Secretary of State about this issue. And uh, we're confident that this bill actually makes the system more secure. No, I mean, the basic premise would be that uh, their information, the available data already available to uh, the agency, so in this instance, Secretary of State, would be able to verify that they are, in fact, eligible, right? Uh, now, they would still need to attest, and then they would still have the option to opt out, but uh, folks that don't meet that criteria would not be uh, given that opportunity. So we would essentially create uh, a barrier for them uh, so that we don't have those accidents. Yeah, there's seven and seven. Is there five, seven? Five. five. It, it, Department of Aging, HFS, DHS. You know, mostly human service agencies. Um, in, any type. The goal here is to uh, make it easier for taxpaying citizens to interact with their government. That's the point of this bill. So, if you're going to get a driver's license and you're going to fork over information about yourself. Why should you have to duplicate that same process with a separate bureaucracy in state government when we have these wonderful things called computers <laughs> that talk to each other? So, uh, you know, that's the point, is to streamline bureaucracy, make it easier on taxpaying citizens in Illinois to interact with their government, all the while saving, saving money and increasing accuracy of our voter rolls as well as uh, making sure that we have more participation. Back to Hannah's question, you know, if that's your, if the concern is making our voter rolls more accurate, then this is your bill. That's the point of this bill. Uh, if we have a data set at the driver's uh, facilities, you know, that's gathered from interaction with individuals because they're making application for a driver's license, then we ought to use that data set to make sure that what's housed at the State Board of Elections is more accurate and you know but if we're going to have a debate about you know voter fraud which has been an established myth in the country um, then this debate isn't going to go very far so we, we should focus on what the bill does and what it's designed to do and that is simply increase accuracy uh, make sure that the process is streamlined for individuals in the state and all the while increasing turnout and saving money, which is a pretty common sense set of uh, solutions to some of the problems we have in the state. Senator, you talk a little bit about streamlining and, and cost saving. Is there a dollar amount that it will save the state, or is it uh, flat? You know, it won't cost us anything, but it's, we're not losing any from here. Yeah, so I don't, I'm not aware of any set dollar amount, but I do know that in other states, you know, in other counties, uh, in, you know, all over the country, uh, there's been sizable savings on the part of local county clerks in addition to state government. So, you know, we should, we should be upfront that there's going to be required changes in state agencies. There's probably going to be some cost associated with that. But after the process is established, there's virtually no cost to this. And it eliminates uh, different people in different levels of government in different agencies doing the same thing over and over again. So clearly, when you're talking about uh, workforce, when you're talking about pushing paper, you know, when you're talking about all of the mund mundane things that uh, employees of state and local governments do in order for this to work, when you streamline that effort, there's going to be substantial savings. And I think, you know, once we get this passed, signed into law, we'll be able to show what that is. I don't, I don't know about a hard I don't know about a hard data I'm sure there is but I mean it just it's just a um, I mean if you if you think about um, the barriers the barriers to individuals voting 
um, which ought not be their age or citizenship because that's the two requirements, 18 years of age, U.S. citizenship, um, you know, same day voter registration. We know that well over 80 percent of those individuals that cast their ballots on election day in the state would have been registered through this bill. So eliminate, and I think it's well, I think it might be 86 percent actually, eliminate those out of the process, get rid of that cost, get rid of that hassle for the individual, for the election judges. Um, you know, that right there is a step in the positive direction. And, you know, I've had many people come to me in the district that I represent, uh, predominantly younger voters, to say that, you know, if it were just easier, especially, you know, if, if you're uh, moving from one place to the other or you're going to college or you live in this apartment, then you live in this apartment, if it was an e easier experience, um, that would make it, in their minds, better in terms of participation. So this is a way to make it as seamless and as easy as possible for, I think, for the voter experience. And I think that only supports greater participation and turnout in future elections. Has the governor's office been a part of negotiations this time around and putting this bill together? Because last time it was bipartisan and you still vetoed it. Uh, so we have actually been in conversations with the governor's office, uh, you know, we have had some positive discussions. I, I think we look forward to, uh, with Representative Fortner and, and Senator Menard continuing that process. But, uh, you know, we've had no indication so far that they've uh, had any major issues with what we've proposed right now at this moment. Um, and I should mention just to the ease of the voter experience, you know, in the Asian American community, over a third of our community is limited in English. Um, you know, removing a barrier, making it easier to vote, uh, increasing access uh, is a major thing. And I neglected to mention that one of Chinatown's leaders, Debbie Liu, is with us. Uh, she'll be available to, to speak with many of you after this press. And by the way, it's not just voter registration initial, it also is updating your uh, address. If Correct. Right. Absolutely. Which is huge, right. being the year where people feel okay about being bigots and being bullies. I mean, what are you hearing in your districts about representative <laughs> 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 and Representative Shimkus? I mean, they're unapologetic about, you know, Congressman King. And, and I, I would have to think a lot of people are, are thinking, you know, right on. This is 2017. So, you know, my organization does deal with uh, discrimination, and we are concerned about anti-immigrant sentiment. But what I'd say for today and, and this press uh, topic and automatic voter registration, our hope is that this is something that, regardless of where you are on those other issues, this is something you can rally around, right? What we're talking about here is uh, increasing access for all voters. So that is people from every stripe uh, of the political spectrum, uh, and that is our hope that we maybe for once uh, as a state, but, uh, you know, even as larger as a nation, uh, can be un unified around that idea and, uh, you know, find some common ground around our democracy. So that's our hope. I don't, you know, so Dave, that, I, I think, unfortunately, that's going to be there, whether we have this bill or whether we don't. And, um, you know, this bill, from its inception in the spring of, get my ears right, 2015, when this was first introduced in uh, the Senate, and I think Representative Gable may have had a bill prior to that, actually. I may have just misspoke. Um, you know, the whole effort here is to reinforce what she said in her, in her remarks, that you, you, elections, access to the ballot box, participating in democracy is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what your viewpoints are doesn't matter, you know, the color of your skin, doesn't matter how much money you make or how little money you make, your vote is, is counted equally. And when we have simple common sense ways to reform our government, to make that process easier for people, we ought to do it as elected officials. And I, I know there's individuals on both sides of the aisle that embrace that. The things that you articulated Unfortunately, they're present in our politics today. Uh, they're going to be present, I think, in the near future. Uh, one way we can come together, though, I think, in Illinois, this session is on this issue because it does make just 
common sense. It's a common sense change. If this is a common sense, why aren't more states doing this? There are. So the trend isn't down, the trend is up. There were two, there's now seven, there's an eighth pending, and that was just in the past, uh, you know, two years, max, probably more like 12 months uh, for a bulk of those. So the, the reason why states are doing this is because it saves money and it increases participation in uh, elections, which is something both parties ought to strive for, uh, regardless of your political stripes. Um, you know, we have a budget crisis here that's well established. Everybody knows about it. Is this going to solve the budget crisis? Of course not. Uh, but is it going to put in place reforms that will save money over time? Without question, it will, not just for the state government, but for county clerk's offices and election authorities all over the state. Um, having been a county board chairman for eight years, uh, I understand the significance of uh, state action that would help county governments reduce costs. We know that one of their biggest costs in a county election office is processing uh, voter registration paperwork. That is one of the largest costs of any county clerk. So this will streamline that process and will uh, reduce those costs. So I think whether we act or not in Illinois, more and more states, regardless of their political bent, are going to go to this system. I'm just curious whether, you know, maybe to you it's an established falsehood, but to, uh, and maybe Representative Borton might want to talk about this too, but to, to constituents back home, is it an established falsehood and, and could concerns about voter fraud from constituents cause any problem for passing this bill? Honestly, I think that was one of the challenges we had with the previous bill mm -hmm. was, uh, offering facts, putting facts out there uh, to address the myth of widespread voter fraud uh, that, uh, you know, I've seen polls that show that, you know, members of both parties believe that there's this, you know, situation where when we have an election, there's, you know, millions of people voting illegally somehow in the country. Um, if you just look at facts, that it just isn't the case. That is not true. Is there uh, isolated incidences where um, individuals vote or maybe are registered twice? I mean, we've seen individuals in the Trump administration in the White House that are registered in multiple states, right? That doesn't mean that that's fraudulent, for example. But, you know, there's all these things that, that are designed to pick apart a system that works pretty well, that can clearly work better with bills like the ones we're offering. And so that... That's something that we have to do along the way. That also gives organizations uh, that have worked very hard to push back on this idea the opportunity to talk about it more, too. So look at the governor's veto message. He articulated some of that. Look at the debate in the Senate. I'm not sure about the House, but that was a big part of the debate. And I think it's our jobs to you know, offer facts and say, this is the case, this isn't the case. If you're concerned about it, this bill helps fix that. Just to add one point to your question, I think that when done right, because we have so much of the data in places like the Secretary of State's motor vehicle database that can address this question, I think we can give more assurance to the voters, however they feel about the issue of voting fraud, that this is a data set that is going to allow us to make a more secure check that the people are qualified and should be registered to vote. Thank you. And so I know that we have some legislators that need to get to work and get on the floor, uh, but we will be available uh, for technical questions for those who want to follow up. But thank you so much, everybody. You. Have a great day.